Davidson's going to be a witness well, to our representative. Amendment in the gallery. First of all, does it matter to you if I stand? No, I, you, were, you and I already talked about that enough. Okay. I, I understand you might need to sit down, so we're going to do that. Um, Council has laid the foundation appropriately for this document, this exhibit, to be a business record. And so to the extent that the document does not otherwise contain additional layers of hearsay, it is admissible. However, a business record does not permit the admission uh, over a hearsay objection as to, <coughs> as to narratives, out-of-court statements that are made by somebody else. Uh, it doesn't permit them to come in for the purposes of the truth. Now, here's the dilemma that you face. Counsel is, in fact, if he's getting these narratives in and he intends to use them to prove that, in fact, these communications, if they were communications, took place, he's using them inappropriately, number one, but number two, he's also testifying. You've got two problems with that. One, of course, he ought not to be testifying in a case in which he is counsel. That's an ethical dilemma. Secondly, he has refused and has attempted to insulate himself from being called as a witness in this case. And to the extent that he is using statements that he made, if, he, if he's using them for that reason, I don't know why he's using them, but if he's using them for that reason, he absolutely has to be considered as having waived his ability to not be called as a witness in this matter. I bring that up now because I, I was kind of waiting for it. Um, it now has happened, and I think that before it goes any further, the court needs to deal with that issue. All right. You want to be heard on that, Mr. Weaver? Yeah, I do. Um, Your Honor, they're being submitted uh, to show a timeline. Um, you're going to hear some testimony, I imagine, from defense counsel as to when they knew that the parties were adverse. Um, we actually got some communications just this morning, which uh, were just handed to me right when I think Your Honor had asked us a question. I was still looking at a document that had been handed to us, which I think establishes this fact, um, uh, but I didn't have a chance to fully look at it. Um, we're not we're not submitting the document to show that the statement or the matter asserted in the in the statement uh, that that's not that that's not the purpose for submitting the information. The reason we're submitting the information is to show that there was already settlement discussions going on. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, So, um, I mean, that's our position. Uh, we're submitting it for that purpose. Uh, well, my thought is that uh, Exhibit NN would be admissible if you offered it. It's, your, it's a business record. It's a billing that uh, even this witness, as a potential uh, authenticating witness, has indicated uh, would have been received by the district. And so I don't think there's any legitimate authenticity concern, and so NN would be admitted. Then the uh, question about the truth of uh, what it's being admitted to potentially show, I mean, my, I do differ with you a little bit, Mr. Gentile, on that idea. I do think that once it's admitted, then the line items in there uh, are conceivably admitted for the purposes of the truth as to what the billings are about. However, I do agree with you that in the event there's uh, some sort of dispute as to the nature of the settlement discussions having to do with Linetti, uh, in the event that the uh, defense takes exception with the timeline, or that they've been occurred at all, uh, they would have uh, the right to call you as a witness and delve into that with you. And that's why, Your Honor, I got into the, the emails. I don't, I don't imagine that there may be a dispute on that. I think they are going to acknowledge that these things were occurring. I think I was given emails that demonstrate that. So, okay. uh, Well, so in regard to Mr. Gentile's objections, I do want to move to admit it. And, and any objection to their admittance, Mr. Zornowski I, or Mr. Gentile? I object to their, to the, if they're being admitted for the purpose of establishing that in fact, 
the events occurred on the dates that are set out, mm -hmm. then those are not proper purposes for the admission of a business record. This is a this is not a record that was kept internally. This is not a record that was generated by the Virgin Valley Water District of its own activities. This is a bill that came from an outside vendor. There is no indicia of reliability as to the statements made by the outside vendor that is covered by the uh, business record exception. Okay? And so when you're dealing with multiple levels of hearsay, to the extent that they're even going to contend that um, that these events did in fact take place on those days without bringing in something that can support that other than this document itself. You know, the mere fact that a bill was submitted and it was paid doesn't prove that what was on the bill was did in fact happen. And that's not what the business record is proof of that fact. It in is, my opinion. It's that, proof of the fact. I mean, it, it might not ultimately be seen as uh, a finding of fact that a court makes that for example, on 6-17-2011, there was this call from Lenny's attorney and the settlement was discussed. Or for that matter, whether on June 9th that Mr. Bingham's office continued to work on coordinating a meeting with Lenny and his attorney. But I do think that those line items stand for the proposition that are at least proof that those things did occur. Well, that we have a... a a difference of opinion on that. You're the judge, so your opinion is going to prevail. But um, I, I, I would tell you that, to the, in, in my humble opinion, um, to the extent that a business record contains multiple levels of hearsay, it does not, by the admission of the business record itself, it does not forego or foreclose the multiple hearsay objection. Here, it not only contains hearsay, but it contains hearsay from a lawyer who's essentially attempting to avoid cross-examination and, um, and to avoid being called as a witness and is testifying in a case in which he is an advocate. Well, the reason we disagree is because it is hearsay, but it's admitted as an exception to the hearsay rule as a business record. Then, he's per then we're permitted to impeach him. Well, I Not just by calling him, but by bringing in character evidence. Well, I don't... Any way you can I, impeach I can't him. Tell you, I can't tell you how it is you're going to address the potential impeachment of it. As long as oh, counsel oh, knows what he's getting let me, into. Let me, if I'm talking to you, let me finish. All right. Okay. All right. The way I look at it is it's admitted as NN. Everything in the billing record at some level is proof that whatever is recited there occurred. Meetings, discussions, whatever they may be. It's proof of that. In the event the defense takes exception to any of the facts contained in the record that you feel are relevant and you want to present some evidence to dispute either the timeline or the accuracy of any of the line items or anything else in this Exhibit NN, you can proceed as you see fit. You can, I think you can call Mr. Bingham now, since, since it is his office and it, and it uh, is a, uh, it's, he's the best witness that it would be attributable to. So Mr. Bingham has opened the door, in my opinion, to now being called on these issues in exhibit, admitted exhibit NN. Or if you want to do it through some sort of um, other technique, other evidence, whatever it may be, I think you can do that. All I'm saying is that it's hearsay, <coughs> However, there's an exception to the hearsay rule that allows it to be admitted as some proof at some level of what it suggests to the court on the factual front. And it's up to you to decide whether you want to present evidence to show me that, for example, uh, these things never happened, or they happened in a different way, or that they happened at different times. That's up to you to do that. I just want to, my, the purpose of my objection is served. No, thank you. So just to let you know, NN is admitted, as I said. But now, Mr. Bingham, uh, in the event the defense wants to call you regarding Exhibit NN, not everything else under the sun unless you essentially open the door on something else as we go. But on, on NN, they can call you and ask you questions about it.